Hi, I'm Frank X. Walker, and I am Creative Lexington. I mean, there's a lot in the name, and there's a lot in, in naming yourself. That if you don't tell your own story, somebody else will, and I never want to be misrepresented. In the beginning, I think, I believe that I had to be one thing or one person. When I was always interested in, in multiple things, you know, when I was in high school, I was the, the jock, but I was also the, you know, that uh, scholar in the hallway with the thick glasses. But when I first started using the X in my name, it was because my friends called me Frank X. When I had hair, if you can imagine me with hair, and glasses, people believed I looked like Malcolm X. But it's not an abbreviation for xylophone or Xavier. It's, it's just X, as in the unknown, like in mathematics. In 1991, I opened a dictionary, and my dictionary said, Appalachians were the white residents of the mountainous regions of Appalachia. And immediately I knew that, okay, that meant I could never be an Appalachian. You know, if the best writers in Kentucky were all Appalachian, I could never be one of the best writers in Kentucky because I couldn't be an Appalachian writer. So the, when I sat down that night to, to make it make sense in my journal, I invented a word, Afrolatcha. You know, I took that, that poem to my writing group on the following Monday night, and that evening we made a decision to name ourselves the Afrolatchian Poets. And we're one of the oldest active African-American writing groups in the country, you know, not just in Kentucky, but in the country, and we're really proud of that. I have eight books of poetry, many of them uh, paint or repaint or recast Kentucky in a different way than it's been portrayed in the past. So Lexington should be celebrating Isaac Murphy the way Louisville celebrates Muhammad Ali because it would say immediately that we value horse racing, we value African-American contribution to horse racing, and that people who look like that are valued in this community. Uh, by not having those things, I think it suggests the counter-narrative that those things aren't valuable and aren't valued here. I don't want to believe that that's true. The support for the play was, you know, an example that people really appreciated learning his, his full story. If I had the time and, and, and the support, I could probably write a, a new play every year for the next 30 years to help fill in that gap. You know, but it, they left with history, you know, with a lesson in their pocket. And I, I think that's the beauty of art, that you can get these things that need to happen and they can be served up in a way that doesn't distance people, but actually makes them you know, appreciate what they just learned. I think art is that powerful, potentially, that, you know, that they can move you to a cathartic moment. You know, it can make something finally click and make sense to you. you know, it can lift you up. Uh, it can point to a different kind of pain to make yours make sense. I, you know, I feel for those people whose quality of life does not include the arts. You know, I think that's, that's, that can't be a high quality of life. If, if there's no art in it, then you, you know, you're not really living. You know, you, you're cheating yourself. Please support local arts because we are Creative Lexington.